happy Sabbath and uh, welcome to our last presentation in the series, The Prophets and the Messengers. I know it has been a journey. We have done 32 videos and this is uh, the 33rd video, which is the last. And uh, I pray that uh, we have been blessed and the information we have gotten that it will be useful to draw us closer to Jesus Christ more than ever before. So I thought that uh, I'll close up this session with uh, some encouragement. You know, after all has been said and done, so what? After all has been said and done, so what and what next? Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful that the Sabbath has drawn nigh. And uh, we want just to repose and reflect and stay under your feet to be rejuvenated physically and spiritually. Give us the rest that we need in such a time as this. We need an anchor and be very sure. We should be very sure that uh, we hold on unto the anger that cannot drift. And so thank you because your promises are true. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I thought that uh, I will finish on a high point. After all has been said, what, ne what uh, so what? And so I just like to share something, Christian essentials. With all these apostasies that are happening, with all these uh, drifting away from the truth, with all this setting up of new foundations which are not built upon the rock of ages, a Christian person must sit back and uh, examine themselves and see what they can do because uh, the, 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 the teacher says that uh, this is the whole duty of man. Everything shall be brought under judgment, whether hidden things, were the motives. And so those who have committed what they have committed, they have committed it. Some are things we can change, some things we cannot change. Some needs are a confession which cannot be done because most of them are dead. And some will need restitution. And some are alive to do that and some are not alive to do that. But what is so essential to me and you at such a time as this? This is what um, I like to look at because this is the most uh, uh, important part to me. In uh, the book of Genesis chapter 1, as we look at uh, what are the essentials, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we read, and God said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness and uh, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and ever over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and so the most important thing that god created us in his own likeness once we realize that then we can start a journey, a new journey, not to um, uh, seek after anything else, but seek after this image that has been lost. In uh, the book of Isaiah 43, verse 7, the word of God says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him here, I have made him. And so... This is very essential. God created us in his own image. And for the reason, he created us for his own glory and not for our own glory. Now, Moses, the meekest man upon the face of the earth, uh, told the Lord, show me thy glory. And uh, that famous verse is written in Exodus 33 verses 18. I'm looking at uh, what are the essentials now. After we have known what we have known, what do the Lord expect of us? In Exodus 33, 18 to 19, uh, 
And he said, I beseech thee, show me the glory. And he said, I'll make all thy goodness pass before thee, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on him on whom I will show mercy. Again, we read on in Exodus 34, verses 5 to 7. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, uh, for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And so in uh, showing forth his glory, he proclaimed his name and his character. And uh, in the book of Jeremiah, what is so essential? We are looking at the essential after knowing all this. In fact, when we see the apostasy is happening that we have been reading of, the greater the darkness, the greater the glory that should shine in us. The stars of heaven are so bright when it is so dark. And that is what the Lord needs of us. When there is so darkness, the Lord expects us to shine more. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, uh, this is uh, what the Lord says. Um, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Whoever that will glory, does he have to glory because he knows a lot of Adventist history? Does he have to glory because he is um, now knowledgeable than the others who are before him? No. The Lord says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. There is loving kindness, judgment and righteousness these are the things that the lord delights in and they are the very things also that we should delight in we should not glory that we know much and uh, we are better than our ancestors who did this and did that and so uh, uh just looking at the essential what are the essentials of having all this information we are told a perfect character is the goal that the Lord has set before us. We can have a lot of knowledge. We can have a lot of information. But at the end of the day, these are the essentials that the Lord is needing from us. And so uh, um, the, the, the reason I'm saying this, the essentials, and now leaving behind all these apostasies that I have been mentioning, is this, that um, we may understand that Greater darkness shall cover all the face of the earth. And what the Lord is expecting is for us to arise and shine, for his light has risen upon us. As we see wicked men becoming more wicked, are we just to sit and lament of wickedness? No, we have to seek the Lord while he may be found, that the whole earth may be filled with his glory, according to Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And so he says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Be perfect, therefore, or be therefore, perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect and uh, in the book uh, of hebrews uh is it hebrews 12 or um hebrews chapter 12 verses uh, 12 Uh, to let me see Hebrews chapter 12 uh, verses 12 to
Let us look at Hebrews chapter 12 from verses 12. And I'll read on and stop at some place. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 12. Wherefore lift up the hands uh, which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed. And we have a lot of people who are sick among us physically and spiritually. Make straight path for your feet. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of the bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as a so who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward when he will have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burneth with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that had entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust throughout with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the seat of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, unto an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. Be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1. Hebrews chapter 2, therefore we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. And uh, in the book of Revelation, we are told to hold to that which um, uh, we have to hold. Um, but that which you have already hold fast till I come in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2. Verses 25, we are living in the most dangerous times and the most perilous time when anything that can be shaken will be shaken. And these apostasies had their roots back in the days of our forefathers. Now, will we fulfill the prophecies uh, in the positive way or uh, in the negative way? That is the thing that we have to be asking ourselves. Uh, are we ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? And so... In the book of First um, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3, we are told, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. As we look for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and to see him who is pure, we should, we who have this hope, purify ourselves. And that is why Peter says in, um, uh, that is, uh, First Peter chapter 2, this is what um, we read in First Peter chapter 2. We are for laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the world that he may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And how do we offer these spiritual sacrifices? In Hebrews and uh, Romans chapter 12, we are told that uh, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is an acceptable service uh, to the Lord. And uh, being renewed of your mind, not conforming to the pattern of this world after all has been said and done what the lord is coming to see is not a people who have a knowledge but a people who have purified themselves from the world and so the path to attaining to a perfect character is progressive from step to step and from glory to glory till we attain the main goal and we are told uh, uh, is that uh, first corinthians 3 18 as we behold we are changed from glory to glory 
in uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 18, but the path of the just is as the shining light that uh, shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And um, every day we continue moving closer to Jesus Christ that um, uh, uh, as we move closer to him, actually he has drawn his hand. If we clasp on it, we shall have a sure anchor that doesn't fail. Um, in Revelation chapter 22, the lamb himself giveth uh, the, uh, uh, the invitation. And uh, in Revelation 22, 17, he says, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is at thirst come and whosoever we let him take the water of life uh, freely. And so one way of drawing more closer to Christ is just by prayer. And uh, prayer does not bring down God, but prayer takes us to God. And he says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. But then again in 6, 3, he says that, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if we being so evil now how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more shall our heavenly father do what? Give the Holy Spirit. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow. And so for him to make sure that sorrows will not be added unto the blessings he gives uh, unto us, he gives us freely his spirit so that we may know even how to use the thing that he has given unto us. In James 4, 3, ye ask and receive not because he ask amiss that he may consume it upon our last. But when we ask, it should be for the purpose of the pure and true religion in James, James 1, 27. And uh, we are told that it is to visit the fatherless, the orphans, and keeping yourself unspotted. After all has been said, after going through the history of Adventism, what is the most essential thing in our life? Uh, we must have faith in Hebrew 11, 6. And uh, I'd like us to read Hebrews 11, 6. We are looking at the essential after all has been said. What are the essential things that the Lord is looking for? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So we must not only seek the Lord, but we must seek him diligently. If we will be profited by his atonement and his intercession, we must seek him uh, diligently. There are people who are not in the business of seeking the Lord. And... Uh, Talking about faith, having the faith and believing in him, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Sometimes we will want to have faith. That is uh, Romans 10, 17. Sometimes we will want to have faith. But then the things we spend our time on cannot, um, uh, 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 um, cannot um, uh, add anything to our faith. And so... Uh, Faith is the expecting the word of God to do what it says and then depending upon that word to do what it says. And in Hebrews 11 verse 1, we are told now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We should live as if the things we are hoping for have been already been fulfilled in our life. And so... Uh, Man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4, 4, but from, by every word that cometh from the mouth of the Lord. We do not expect to have faith, be diligent in seeking him. If we don't know what his word says, we should be seeking. Or what his word says, we should be doing. And so the psalmist himself says in Psalms 119, 130, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. And that is what we want at such a time as this. The word of God to have an entrance in our heart. And then talking to his disciples in John chapter 15, he tells them, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Sometime 
uh, the reason why actually we are not getting these blessings and we are not tapping into these uh, 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 promises is because we have neglected not only prayer, but we have neglected the study of his word to enrich us. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. In Psalms 19 verse 11, David says that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And uh, many people are struggling uh, with uh, with sin and they ask, how shall we overcome this? Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not um, uh, sin against thee. Paul in 2 Corinthians 7 one says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all Filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And know ye not that uh, your body is the temple of God, which the Holy Spirit dwelleth in you. And if any man defileth the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Some of the things we have read have been startling things, but uh, they won't be of profit if we do not cleanse ourselves from every de defilement. If we do not set apart time to have a relationship with God, if all that is entailed in our life is running hitherto and uh, not having uh, a, a quality time uh, with uh, Jesus Christ. And so uh, our mind must be fed uh, the things that uh, are in conformity with the will of God. Let this mind that was in Christ also let this mind that was also in Christ be in you. Our emotions, our will, our intellect, which makes up the human spirit, they should be under the control of Jesus Christ or they'll be under the control of Satan. And when they are under the control of Jesus Christ, then his spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 16. And so... Uh, uh, what are the essentials we are looking at? Uh, uh, that is the topic we are looking at. After all has been said, after seeing the prophets and the messengers go through what they have gone through, now what is our part? In Proverbs 1, 7, and uh, we read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. And in Job 28, 28, and unto the man he said, behold the fear of the Lord, there is wisdom and to depart from evil, there is understanding. And it's, it's incredible what Job 28, 28 says, that to depart from evil is understanding. When you go to the book of Daniel chapter 12, I presume it is 12 verse 10, um, Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 we read that um, many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise sh shall understand and we have been told that um, uh, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding so the, the people who shall be understanding in the end time are the people who have been purified. Sometimes we get startled with the news uh, that we hear. Sometimes we are startled with the events that are transpiring in the world. We are told that they, those who purify themselves shall understand, but the wicked shall not understand a thing. And uh, why is the issue of understanding, understanding a, a most important thing? Because when you understand, you know what you ought to do. And like a wicked person who don't understand, they don't know what to do. And so the wise will understand the times they are living in and what they are supposed to do. Like unto the children of um, Issachar who understood the time and what Israel ought to do. And so uh, the Lord is saying in Psalm chapter Psalms, the division 50, verse 5, gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And um, you remember that um, uh, Jesus Christ promised to make 
a new covenant with us in Hebrews chapter 8. And he says that I'll make with them a new covenant. I'll write my laws in their hearts. And uh, I'll clean them from their idols. And they shall be my people and I shall be their God. And that is what exactly uh, we want to be God's children. We want to be cleansed from defilement. We want to... Uh, the, the people of the new covenant, the people of the everlasting covenant. But as we do this, um, we can only get more closer to Christ as we walk as he walked. Because we are told that whoever said that he abided, he abided in him must walk even as he walked in First John chapter 2, verse 6. And one of the things that um, really uh, uh, made Christ uh, 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 be able to overcome sin and go all through the way, uh, go all through the afflictions he had, is uh, he saw the travail of the soul and how many shall be brought unto righteousness. That is uh, Isaiah chapter 53, I presume verse 11. And he was glad, he was strengthened to go. And so as we do service to other people, how God anointed Jesus Christ and how he went uh, how he went about doing good. That is exactly what we want. That uh, uh, for our character to be shaped, we have to interact with the people and uh, the contradictions we meet from uh, 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 interacting with these people, they are the ones that will shape our character. And so in John 20, 21, he says, uh, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me, even so send I you. And in this sending, we are given the Holy Spirit, which is so essential and which is the seal for our redemption. Uh, it is um, uh, uh, for uh, our inheritance to make us heirs, for us to be heirs of the kingdom and sit in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. We must be partakers of his spirit and then sit in that uh, divine family. And so... Uh, we need to pray more. And in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there and with all perseverance and supplication of the saints. The current afflictions cannot be compared to the glory which shall be fulfilled in the, in the near future. And so what the Lord is needing is uh, to give us of his spirit. And uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He wants us to be uh, clothed with his own righteousness so that uh, nothing can defile us and nothing can bar us from uh, the doors of the pearly gate. And so as we try to wrap up uh, this, uh, in Zechariah 10, uh, this is what we read as we try to close up. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of uh, the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. And in Hosea 6, 1, come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up after two days. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we fall on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. In Deuteronomy 32, 1, 2, uh, 4, we read, O ye give ye ear, O ye heavens, and I'll speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Because I'll publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is him. And so when uh, we draw closer to Christ, who is just and perfect in his ways, as we draw closer to him, we continue assimilating his image, his likeness. When uh, Adam was in the Garden of Eden, 
always communing with God, he was growing in the perfect similitude of his maker. It was only when he went out of the Garden of Eden that the image of God in him was mad. And the very work of Jesus Christ is not just to bring us back to Eden. Because in Eden, Adam has to grow, had to grow in full stature and come to the level of the angels. And so greater is the work before us in Christ that he has not just to bring us back to Eden after we had been degraded by 6,000 of sin, but he has to even lift us beyond Eden after becoming nothing to sit in heavenly places on the same uh, level with the angels, reconciled unto him and made perfect in him. And so... Uh, he has promised that uh, he will fill us with his spirit in Exodus 31 verse 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. This is the same work that the Lord wants to do in us, to fill us with his spirit, his wisdom and understanding and knowledge in all manner of workmanship, both in spiritual and in physical and in social thing. He wants us to make us whole Again, in Isaiah 11, 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And why is this issue of the impartation of the spirit so important unto us? In Acts chapter 1, verse 18, he told his disciples, but ye shall receive power, and after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my wit be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost uh, part of the earth. The, the same way the disciples were filled with the Spirit, and they were witnesses of the gospel. So we have to be filled with the Spirit, and then we are told that the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached as a witness, then shall the end come. That is what the Lord wants to accomplish with us. After all has been said and done, after all the apostasies, God is needing a people, a minute people who can stand true to him while actually the probation still lingers. So the conclusion, what is the last message to the world? What is the last message to the world? Uh, what is the last message to the world? In uh, Christ of Black Object Flesh, page 415, paragraph 5. What is the last message to the earth? Those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold your God, the last race of merciful light, the last message of mass to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The last race of massive, the last race of merciful light, the last message of mass to be given to the world is a revelation, not a proclamation of his char character, but a revelation of his character of love. We must reveal the same, and if we reveal the same, it will reflect itself and it will. Re, uh, proclaim itself because we shall be living episodes of uh, uh, the profession that we have. And uh, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And lastly, behold, I come quickly. Blessed he that keepeth the saints of the prophecy of this book. And so after traveling all this journey, after reading the things that have been written, they were written as an admonition and an example for us who have come to the end of this world. Information alone does not save, but information should help us to seek that which we are lacking in our lives and not be counted on the part of the negative history, but on the part of the positive uh, 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 history. And so may the Lord bless us. May you go through the series, may you look at these things, but more so, may this last presentation, what are the essential, the Christianity essential, uh, be uh, uh, our meditation and our prayer in our everyday life. And uh, may God bless us.
let us close with a, a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Because uh, it is your character which is most important at such a time as this. And we pray that whatever you'll do to shape us into thy own likeness, Lord, thou may do it, but in thy grace and thy mercy, giving us the strength to be able to endure every step of ladder that we may climb. The eternal hope is set before us, Lord, and you have set eternity in our hearts. Help us not to fall after human devising and lean on the arm of flesh, but lean on the arm of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.